in the bathrooms at work we've just had these new hand dryers put in. The old hand dryers were hilarious, they barely worked and there was a, like a health and safety sign above them with little pictures of your hands this brown mark showing where the dirt was likely to be it was like a, an idiot's guide to how you wash your hands but those have been replaced thankfully well actually I think the sign might still be there there with the hand dryers have gone and they've been replaced by these high tech uh, hand dryers called Dyson Air Blades which are quite amazing actually they look a little bit like, like instruments of torture you have to do the You've got like a big slot across the top, and you have to put your hands in them. And uh, you know, I can easily imagine George clamping down on my hands actually when I do it. But it's, it's a brilliant invention actually. It's a very, very powerful jet of warm air that kind of slices out the top of this uh, this slot that you put your hands in, and uh, and dries your hands very effectively. But it's a very interesting experience putting your hand in that because it's uh, you know rather than a Having a big nozzle that normal hand dryers do, like like just like a, a hair dryer, something like that, where there's just quite a large amount of of air moving towards your hand in a big lump. The air blade, as I say, is a very thin slice of high pressure air coming out just at the lip of this uh, slot. Uh, so when you put your hands in, you can kind of feel that uh, thin slice of high pressure air very very clearly delineated on your hand. Uh, and in fact, if you put your hand in and out like this, uh, you can kind of feel this slice of air, slice of high pressure air, moving the skin on your hand in a horizontal line up and down your hand as you do it, which is, I guess, is how the drying process works. Uh, but in some ways, if you didn't know that that was what was happening to you, the sensation is pretty much indistinguishable from having someone. Uh, I don't know why they would do this, but having someone kind of run a pencil up and down your hand, you know, holding a pencil horizontally against your hand and just kind of moving it up and down, or moving a bar or a solid object up and down your hand. It, 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 it's very, very similar to a solid object being pressed against your skin. Which for me says something about how sensation works, I guess, and how possibly how objects are represented uh, because, uh, because what it seems to me is happening there is with this Dyson air blade uh, the, the uh, disturbances that are happening on my hand you know the, the, the pressure against the skin the, the various uh, n uh, nerve endings that are being stimulated the kind of sensor, the sensory motor responses that are being bundled together the actions that I myself are performing as I put my hand down there and perhaps resist the pressure of the of the air a little bit. I mean, all those kinds of uh, sensory motor activities, the feeling of the pressure of the air, but also the contribution to that feeling that I'm making by making uh, moves in return, both conscious moves and moving hand up and down, and the, and the much more low-level moves that my that the skin and flesh of my hand are making as they are kind of depressed by the pressure of the air. That whole sensory motor activity is producing this feeling, which, as I say, is like a solid object being either rolled or slid up and down my hand. And in a sense, I think that's kind of what a solid object is, really. I'm not, I'm not saying solid objects don't exist, of course not. But a solid object, to the extent that it's experienceable at all, is experienceable because it does certain things. No, actually, that's not right. Because because the body has a certain kind of sensory motor relationship to that object. Let's call it. So when I put my hand on a tree, or I put my hand on a pencil, or I put my hand on a dog, uh, I'm not putting my hand on. I'm not experiencing the dog. I'm experiencing the sensory motor uh, composition that is formed by the actions of my sensors and the actions of my um, sensory motor system, not passively but actively and passively, or possibly just actively, in relation to that object. And it's that uh, sensory motor activity which is producing the sensation of an object, not the object itself. I think that's right.